PHD Virtual Backup lets you recover individual files, folders, and application objects without the need to recover an entire virtual machine. With PHD Virtual Backup's file recovery feature, you have two options for recovering files. You can access your data by creating an iSCSI target that can be mounted on any machine with an iSCSI initiator, or as of version 6, you can access your backed up files via a familiar Windows share. Using a Windows Share makes recovering files from Linux backups easy and allows individual users to recover their own files right from their own desktops. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to recover files using a Windows SIF Share. The File Recovery Wizard can be launched from either the Backup Catalog or the File Recovery Area of the PHD Console. I'll click Recover Files, then find the backup I'd like to recover files from. After selecting the backup, the virtual disks associated with that backed up VM are displayed in the window below. You can choose all of the disks in the backup or just one, depending on where your files are located. An individual share will be created for each selected disk. In the next step, I'll select how to access the backed up files. I'll leave the default new option Create Windows Share selected. Windows Sys Shares can be used to recover files from backed up VMs with file systems ext2, 3, and 4, riserfs, ntfs, and fat file systems. For other file systems, you can still recover your files using the iSCSI option. After selecting how I'll recover my files, I need to set up my permissions for the share. I can leave none selected to allow access without a password, or I can supply a password here. The default username to access shares is phdflr. This cannot be changed. Note that the file recovery password is global to the VBA that was used to create the shares. In the configuration options, this password can be changed at any time. If a password is changed, however, you'll need to use the new password to access any existing shares. The file recovery SIF share password can be changed in the configuration area in the connectors tab. After the wizard completes, the share details are displayed in the file recovery area. To access the share, I can select it and click Open. The share is opened in a Windows Explorer window. If I was recovering data for another user, I could simply copy the details here and paste the information into an email. When I view the share I created, I can see a folder with the UUID of the virtual disk. I can now browse this disk and copy or grab any files, folders, or objects that I need. PHD Virtual Backup's file recovery feature lets you restore files and folders by creating iSCSI shares from your backed up disks. You can then mount those shares from your local file system or from any other computer with the iSCSI initiator installed. I'll start in the PHD Virtual Backup console's backup catalog. Here I can see all the VMs that have been backed up. To begin, I'll right click a backup and then select Create iSCSI. In the wizard that opens, I'll make sure the disk is selected and then enter the custom credentials. I'll leave Add Target unselected as I'm going to mount this disk on a different machine. The file recovery page opens and my new target is displayed. If I mouse over the target, I can see the target details. I'll mount this target on another machine using the iSCSI software initiator. The initiator is installed with Windows 7 and Windows 2008 by default. It must be downloaded and installed from the Microsoft website if you're using an earlier version of Windows. If you're mounting the share on a Linux machine, use the initiator available for your Linux operating system. I'll click the Discovery tab, then click Add to enter the IP address of the appliance on which I created the target. Next I'll click Targets. Here I can see the target I just created. I'll select the target, click Log On, then click Advanced. I'll enter my custom credentials in the CHAP Logon area. Then I'll click OK. When complete, the disk appears in Windows Explorer as an additional drive. I can then use Windows Explorer to recover any of the files or folders I wanted. 
For additional information on PHD Virtual Backup, visit the PHD Virtual website at www.phdvirtual.com.